Good evening, and welcome to St. James Catholic Church. To our guests with us, we are honored by your presence and appreciate your participation. Please stand as we sing our opening hymn, 469, Come Holy Ghost, 469. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. As we tonight gather in this holy place, as we anticipate the Pentecost Sunday tomorrow, and tonight the great vigil of that solemnity, as we open our minds, our hearts, to the coming of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We welcome tonight all of our graduates from the local high schools here. This is the very first time that we have invited them for a baccalaureate mass as they will soon graduate to move to a, a new chapter in their lives. 
uh, tonight, so we welcome you. I am just simply delighted that you're here. And we will pray for you tonight, offer you our congratulations, and a blessing near the end of Mass. From Bethlehem High School and from Elizabethtown High School, Central and John Harden High School here in E-Town. It's probably a most appropriate and fitting and right that you are here with us as we ask for the Holy Spirit to come and descend upon us as it did upon the apostles and the Blessed Mother in the Cenacle. We hear at the end of the Gospel about the forgiveness of our sins. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins as we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to my brothers and sisters, that I have great sin in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask blessing. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us into everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We pray. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who willed the Paschal Mystery to be encompassed as a sign in 50 days, grant that from out of the scattered nations the confusion of many tongues may be gathered by heavenly grace into one great confession of your name. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Invite our young members who will go for the liturgy of the word uh, to please join me. Sometimes it's really good to dance around in church, don't you think so? Great, great joy. Today is anticipation of tomorrow, Pentecost Sunday. There are some very important things in our lives that 
are present. We know they're there, but we can't see them. Can you name one thing that is very important? We know it, but we can't see it. Ms. Brady? Holy Spirit, good answer. God. God. What about, do you love anyone? Is there anybody standing right behind you that you just are crazy about and love like crazy? Your parents, do you love them? Do they love you? Can you see it? When you go down for breakfast in the morning, does dad say, here, I'm gonna give you a bowl of love? No, but we know, don't we? Hope, we feel good, joy, which makes you dance sometimes. We feel those things, we know they're there but we can't see them. Pentecost, it was the same. The Holy Spirit, we really don't see, but we know by his power that he is with us. Part of the blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Who would like to carry the sacred scriptures? Now let's say goodbye to Jesus and we're gonna honor the Holy Trinity when we make the sign of the cross. So let's do that together, ready? In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, amen. Go in peace. Dance your way that way. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Thus says the Lord, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Even upon the servants and the handmaids, in those days I will pour out my spirit. And I will work wonders in the heavens and on earth. Blood, fire, and columns of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood at the coming of the day of the Lord, the great and terrible day. Then everyone shall be rescued who calls on the name of the Lord. For on Mount Zion there shall be a remnant, as the Lord has said, and in Jerusalem survivors who the Lord shall call. The word of the Lord. send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh Lord, my God. majesty and glory, robed in light as with a cloak. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. How manifold are your works, O Lord, in wisdom you have wrought them is full of your creatures. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Alleluia. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Creature 
teachers all look to you to give them food in due time. When you give it to them, they gather it. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. If you take away their breath, they perish and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts. In all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit, the word of the Lord. Kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his sides. Disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus again said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven, New sins retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord.
Good afternoon again, everyone. Also want to welcome our other guests who are with us and to the family members, especially the moms and dads of our graduates. Uh, God bless you as, as well. Seems only a little while ago we started our Easter pilgrimage together. And this evening, tomorrow, we mark the end. The great 50 days are over. For 40 of these days, Jesus spent with his disciples before ascending into heaven. And now, like the disciples in the upper room, we await the fulfillment of Jesus' promise at Pentecost, that the Holy Spirit will return and give us all we need to do our work, to live our lives in this place and time as the church he founded and loves and trusts. On Pentecost, it seems to me the cards have changed. The solemnity of Pentecost is as important as the seasons we've celebrated, Advent, Christmas, Lent, Easter, in these seasons, like the early days of the church and the first believers, our time has been spent in understanding, growing, embracing faith in God and his son and the relationship we have with our Lord Jesus Christ. With the promises of God, the coming of his son to live among us, be with us, really be true, will he keep his promises of the course of Christian history, we've learned and experienced that the answer is yes. Advent, Christmas, Lent, and Easter are our learning to have faith in God. Pentecost, it seems to me, turns the tables on us. Focus has changed. Now it is about God's faith in us. How we are to carry out the commission entrusted to us, and to carry on with life as God intends. Pentecost affirms that God has confidence in us. The Lord also trusts us. So we take on our tasks on this great feast and birthday of the church, realizing that the Holy Spirit will provide what we need to do, what is asked of us, what is assigned to us, what we need to overcome or to endure or to learn or to change. The Holy Spirit provides for whatever we need gifts of the Holy Spirit bestowed upon us at Pentecost are God's way of saying just that. Pentecost 2018 it may be important for our graduates. What do you need to ask for? What do you need to turn to the Holy Spirit and ask for what you need? There are seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. If you can't remember them, they do because it was not long ago that those seven gifts were conferred upon them in the sacrament of confirmation. For the rest of us, if you have forgotten those seven gifts, then it's a perfect time to dust off your catechism and get back up to speed. But let's see what you need. Is it wisdom? Do you need to trust your intuition no matter how many people are telling you to do otherwise? Do you need to follow your heart, not the crowd? The first step in the acquisition of wisdom is silence. Second is listening. Third, memory. The fourth, practice. The fifth, teaching others. 
Will you need wisdom as you go to college, go to work? Mom and dads, isn't that a great thought? Go to work. Are you going to walk against the crowd when the crowd tells you to do the wrong thing for the wrong reason? Is it understanding or knowledge? Do you need the Holy Spirit to help you develop common sense? Do you need to admit that I don't know what I don't know? Do I need to pay attention so that I may acknowledge my weaknesses, learn from my mistakes? Is it counsel? Do you need to help to discern the right thing to do? Do you need the Holy Spirit to help you figure that out? Do you need the Holy Spirit to remind you that if you do the right thing, you will be given what you need to do it? Is it fortitude? Do you need the Holy Spirit to give you courage? There'll be times that you need that in the months and the years ahead so you can persevere, hang in there, no matter how hard it becomes? Is it piety? Do you need the Holy Spirit to help you to pray? Do you need God to make you aware of his presence so that you're constantly reminded you are never alone as followers of Christ? Never alone. Is it fear of the Lord? Do you need the Holy Spirit to help you get right with God? Not out of a fear of punishment. That's not what fear of the Lord is. Fear of the Lord is fear of losing him and losing heaven. Those are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So this week, take time in your own upper room and pray for what you need, whether it's really big things or small things. The Lord has promised us the Holy Spirit will come. As he promised the disciples, the apostles, and the Blessed Mother in the upper room, Christ has promised that to you as well. So to our graduates who are here this afternoon, add to this list of what you need, what you're going to commit to do to practice your Catholic faith in the next chapter of your lives. I would want to say that I want to encourage you to do these things, but that would be a lie. I really want to insist that you do them for your own salvation and well-being, that you're responsible for your own relationship with Christ and his church, pledged to him today a great day to do that on the birthday of his church. Do these things. Pray daily. Keep it simple, but pray daily. Secondly, stay close to the sacraments, for there is where you experience Christ, worship God, and receive the Holy Spirit. Serve God by serving your neighbor. That's what disciples of Christ do. We've already done that in many ways exceedingly well. Just don't stop. Run from sin as fast as you can. The better you get, the more that evil one is going to be after you. Run from it. 
Choose your friends wisely as the world opens up a bit for you. Practice forgiveness. That's what the apostles heard in the Holy Gospel for Pentecost. And lastly, you have an obligation. We all do. I just want to remind you. You have an obligation to bring someone else to Christ. Don't be shy. Don't be bashful. Don't be reserved in doing that. I know each of you, and you will bring others to Christ if you do nothing else than just lead by your example. It's a blessing and a joy for us to recognize you this afternoon. And don't forget, St. John Paul's constant comment to the young people he was so fond of. In many ways, you were his favorite. He would say over and over and over and over again, you are not the future of the church. You are the church. You are not the future of the church. You are the church. Like him, I am so grateful for you. You simply make us better. So on this day of Pentecost, soon your graduation, God bless you abundantly. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. My brothers and sisters, let us make that profession together. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God on God, from life to life, true God. one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. God, our Father, be pleased with our prayers that we lift up to you as the disciples of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For Holy Mother Church, all her pastors, sustain them in their service to us so that we learn ever more deeply virtue's sure reward, our salvation in Christ, and a joy that never ends. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray that actions of the Holy Spirit in the world may bring peace and well-being to all the people in every land, and may Mary, the Immaculate Conception, intercede for our beloved country. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. 
Let us pray for those who will benefit from our prayers, especially members of our family, our friends, and members of our family of faith who long for healing in their body and souls. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our members who are graduating from St. James Catholic School in our local high schools and from college. May they continue to grow in the knowledge and love of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters at St. Mark Parish in Haiti, let us pray for them in unity of faith and mission. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for an increase in vocation to the priesthood and religious life. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Heavenly Father, receive with mercy those who have died and grant eternal rest to Grant Thomas French, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, on this momentous day of Pentecost, we ask for the Holy Spirit to fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. With humble petition, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Offertory hymn is 852 at that first Eucharist, 852.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Pour out upon these gifts the blessing of your spirit, we pray, O Lord, so that through them your church may be imbued with such love that the truth of your saving mystery may shine forth for the whole world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son, this same spirit, as the church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Pleni sub celi et terra gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus qui To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of Pentecost on which the Holy Spirit appeared to the apostles in tongues of fire, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands 
with eyes raised to heaven to you, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands and once more giving you thanks he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this whole of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which would be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. We proclaim your death. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Please to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servant, Grant, who has gone before us with the sign of faith and rests in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver 
us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. We await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Our communion hymn is 821, Bread of Life, Hope of the World, 821. Feed 
us now, give us life, lead us to one another. We eat this living bread, we drink this saving cup, sign of hope in our broken world, source of lasting in unity, in love for all we see, that the world may believe in you, God of all who live, bread of life, hope of the world, Jesus Christ, our life, lead us to one another. You are the bread of peace, you are the wine of joy, broken now for your people, poured in endless love.
Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the Father of lights, who is pleased to enlighten the disciples' minds by the outpouring of the Spirit, the paraclete, grant you gladness by his blessing, make you always abound with gifts of the same Spirit. Amen. May the wondrous flame that appeared above the disciples powerfully cleanse your hearts from every evil pervade them with its purifying light. And may God, who has been pleased to unite many tongues in the profession of one faith, give you perseverance in that same faith. By believing, may you journey from hope to clear vision. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing on those among us who graduate. May you continue to let their hearts be grateful for their achievements. May your son, the Good Shepherd, continue to guard and protect them. And may your Holy Spirit inspire them so that they discern always what is right and true and good. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The masses in it go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. National hymn is 783, Sing of Mary, 783. Oh, my God. 